So with the anthologies you've edited, you seem pretty well suited for putting a book like this together. Um, now, do you have any anthologies of your own um, recent or upcoming? I actually, on top of this, I'll have two anthologies coincidentally releasing at the same time at StokerCon. Um, one is a horror library, volume six, which the publisher wanted to kind of have a book release party at StokerCon. A lot of the authors will be there in attendance. So that'll be released. And then I also have a book that I'm putting out under a, my own publishing imprint, uh, Dark Moon Books. And I'm releasing at that time because I'm also gonna be speaking on it as part of the Anne Radcliffe Academic Conference. So it's kind of like a nice little marketing tie-in. So yeah, I'll have all of both of those coming out at the same time. Do they are they themed or? Um, Horror Library is not themed. Uh, that is basically their non-themed stories. Um, historically, it's it's been a chance to try to get different authors that aren't necessarily the same voices that you see over and over again in anthologies. Um, it's it's a chance to include. I've, I included several authors that it's their first published horror story ever. So it kind of gives them either non unpublished or underpublished authors an opportunity to kind of get their foot in the door, to get experience and exposure, but also include some big names. Bentley Little is a regular contributor to every volume. He's the one person we include uh, volume after volume. Usually you try to get a. Um, you know, diff different authors in there. Jeffrey Ford is one of our um, highlight authors, which I'm a huge fan of. And then this other anthology that I'm going to be releasing, it is a, it's called The Five Senses of Horror. And that is a reprint anthology. So that's themed as far as the actual interaction of the human senses and how it relates to horror or how it can inspire writers. So in addition to the stories, I have psychological commentary kind of working through like how how was this successful when the author was speaking to the sense of smell that triggers memories. And because there's a noted human condition that that that's a regular phenomenon that when you smell something, you know, that's that's the most likely of the senses to trigger memories, which would tie into a flashback. Um, there's all kinds of little little nuances like this that you can fit into writing or that authors have used in real interesting ways. Um, is there a horror anthology theme that you would like to try or perhaps a genre mashup that you haven't seen that you'd like to? I'm starting a anthology that's a horror rockabilly anthology. And I didn't think anybody had done that before. I, I was a big uh, rockabilly fan, and I, I love the music, and I love the style. And you know, it had a real big comeback about 10 years ago, and maybe not so much now. But you know, it's a very kind of American phenomenon that everything it's 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 almost like pulp stories of the 40s and 50s just turned up a notch even more. Everything's very fast-paced and action-driven and interesting. So that's that's one particular mashup. But of course, any mashup that I think I haven't seen this before and I want to do it, once I start digging down deep enough, I realize, oh, well, gee, it, ha it has been done. And, you know, it was done 10 years ago by a very big name editor and authors and other people have done it. But there's just there's so much material out there, no matter how well read I try to be or I think I am. You, just, you realize you're barely scraping the surface and there's just so much material around you and material that's come out in the past that you just can't keep up with everything so that's one I, I actually i have a whole running list of different ideas and some of them are just like laughable but uh i'm a believer in just writing down whatever comes to my mind mm -hmm. at least saving it for later no matter how bad it is because it's, it's my ideas i don't have to share it with anybody but at least it's it's just kind of the brainstorming concept if i if i think of something i'll put it down and i'll, I'll come back to it later and it may trigger a new idea based off of that or may just be something I'll just kind of put a line it line through and just say I'm never going to work with it, but I'm you know, I'll leave it here in the unused idea bin, that whenever I'm just have nothing going on and I, I can't think of anything, I'll go back to all the unused ideas and just kind of like skim through and through them because, you know, as you know, we live in this culture. There's so much going on around us that your things that you're thinking of, um, 
trigger points that are always changing. So some, something you look at six months later that you've written, you'll look at it in a totally different perspective. But um, on that note, I guess uh, we should probably wrap up. Do you have anything you'd care to add? Uh, gosh, I don't. I'm, I enjoyed the conversation with you. I, you know, in addition right, to the interview, our, our prior conversation, and uh, I'll be at StokerCon, and I, I look forward to meeting anybody who cares to meet the editor of the StokerCon souvenir book. <laughs> I'll be first in line. <laughs> All right, you, you, you be the only one in line. Well, I appreciate it, sir. You have a good night. Hey, you too, Brent. Adios. We'll see you at StokerCon. Take care, buddy. You too. All right.